Hi everyone. In our last lesson when we did the box and we flattened the box out, that's what we're doing now. We're going to flatten the lid. We kind of ignored the fact of which way we flattened them. We got we tried to be consistent, but then when we actually did the DXF files, I don't know if you noticed, I did a picture of the top of the box instead of the bottom, which was really the outside part. Now that didn't matter because all the sides were exactly the same or the opposite sides were exactly the same. So you could actually switch them. But really when we were doing that, when we looked down from above and we took the DXF of it, um, we were actually engraving on the inside of the box. And then all we did was just, we flipped all the pieces over and because they're exactly the same in both directions, it worked. Um, but so this one we're going to be a little more careful on because we do want to be able to get everything oriented right. So I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Um, first of all, let's go ahead and create, we're, this time we're going to create two new components. So component one and new component. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, call this first one assembled lid. Except I can't spell. Assembled lid, and the second one I'm going to call flat lid. Now, right away, I'm going to take all of these bodies, boom, shift, click on the last one, right click, copy, and this is going to be the assembled lid one. So, I'm going to click on here and I'm going to say paste. If you get a paste new option, don't do the paste new. Okay. Wait, we needed to cut those, sorry. Let me go Control Z that. Let me check to see if they're in there still. Yep, they're still in there, so I'm gonna Control Z until they're gone. They're gone now. Actually, what I wanna do, I wanna move them from here into here. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna highlight all of these. Right click on them, I'm gonna do a cut, and then I'm gonna do a paste into the assembled one. This is going to let us, yeah, now they're gone. This is going to let us um, easily, more easily control which ones we see and don't see. Right now, this is the active one. So this life is a little easier this way. So assembled lid and then flat lid. So I'm going to take these that are in here. And instead of cutting this time, I'm going to copy them. I'll make another copy and I want to put them into the flat lid. Paste. Now, it did just paste them. The problem is, is it pasted them right on top of the old ones. So I'm going to zoom out here, move this one over here, and then I'm going to grab this arrow tool and move this to the side. So I'm going to use this space over here to flatten it out. And that's plenty far enough, so I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to say, I don't want this to be the active component. I want it the flat lid to be the active component. This one turns kind of grayed out, and this one's great. So and on top of that, I'm going to hide all these bodies. I don't want to see this one out of the way. I can always turn it back on later. I'm going to minimize this. And I'm going to expand this one because it's the one I'm working on right now. Here's all my new bodies. So if I click on one. You can see I'm looking at those. All right. So I'm going to orientate, orient everything based on the outside. So this is the outside of the top. This is what I want to be able to be engraving on. So I'm going to make sure that when I do this, I'm going to rotate the other ones up this way so that their outside faces are facing up. And that way when I engrave, I'm engraving on, I'm, I'm going to be looking down on the top and engraving that way. So straight up here to modify, align tool, center of the outside, center of the inside, hit the move tool, grab it, drag it out. Why aren't you moving? Oh, because I've got faces here. So it says move object and it's just moving the face, not the whole thing, which is just weird. Like I want to move the body. So then I got to re-click on it and say, okay, what I want to do is move that whole body out, not just the top face. And I'm going to move it. Yeah. Oops, I grabbed the wrong thing. Control Z to undo. I'm going to move it with the arrows always. If you grab the little hand, the little circle tool in the middle you can like when you move the mouse it moves it all up down left right all over the place and it'll just get all messed up really fast so I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what's going on here and I want to see my pivot tool and I'm going to click OK I think that's good I'm going to hit so notice how my pivot tool is like 
weird. It's like doing weird, weird things. So what I'm going to do is hit the home and that'll reset the pivot point. All right. So now I can see now it's pivoting like it's supposed to. And I can see that one is flat with the top and that's where I need it to be. So I'm going to do that again on this lower piece right here. So modify, I'm going to say align center of this one, the center of that one. And then, yep, it's in the middle of it. And then the move tool. And I don't want faces. I want to move bodies. I'm going to move this body and I'm going to drag it out past that one. So now they're together. And I'm going to click OK. Now I'm doing that on each side. So modify. And there'll be a side that's a pain in the butt. And I'll just figure it out. This one align to this one. OK. Move this body. Yep, and it has body out to here. Really close still. And I'm going to rotate this so I can see this one. I'm going to do, click OK. I'm going to do align. Whoops. Close. I'm going to do align. Align tool. I'm going to click on the middle of this one. Can't really see it well. There we go. The middle of this one. Click OK. And I'm going to do move that one. And just a little bit beyond that. And I'm going to make sure before I say OK that it's on the, yep, on the same level. So you can see they're all on the same flat level. OK. Next side. This is all I'm going to do. Once I get this down, I can do my DXF files. So modify, align outside here outside there okay oh this one's on top this is gonna be the one that's a little bit of a pain that's okay but it's gonna be a little bit of a pain it's also backwards i want the tabs because i want it to be like like this like flip it up like this to the outside right now this is the inside face of the of the lip of the sorry the the lid yeah so i'm going to move this out and then I'm going to flip it upside down and see if that one just like twist it from the side. I'll show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do the move tool. I'm going to click here. I'm going to move this out to about there. And now I'm from the side. I'm going to try to flip it. See if. So now it looks like it's even higher up. So that means it's two thicknesses too high. So that's fine. I'm going to click on the down arrow here. And I'm going to say, and it's in the direction of the arrow. So I'm going to just say thickness times two and see if that lined it up. And it did. Don't try and drag it. You'll never drag the right distance. It's going to be a certain number of thicknesses away. So just play around with the number of thicknesses until you get it leveled out. And that's okay. And now I have it. Yep, just like that. Now this piece is just a rectangular piece of wood, so it doesn't actually matter. As long as it's lined up up and down, it doesn't matter which way it's facing. So I'm going to hit the align, I'm going to go up here on the line tool. I'm going to use the middle of this face with, I'm going to get the middle of this face right there. And yep, once again, it's too high, but that's okay. Click okay. And then the move tool, click on that. Scooch it over. Yep. And now it's only, look, it's just barely one higher. I'm not going to need to flip this one, so I don't need to do it twice. I'm going to click on the up arrow. And now because the arrow is up instead of down, I just need to say negative thickness. And it'll move it down one thickness. It's always going to be off by a thickness. All right. Now this one should be easy, hopefully. Like you, they almost, they usually all work but one. So I'm just going to click here here and I'm sure if you spend a little time thinking about it, you'd figure out like which faces you have to click on to get it to work because it will work on that side too you just gotta think about which ones I uh, oops don't want that um, I just haven't spent the time thinking about it enough to have done it there it is drag it out make sure it's flat which it is okay all right last one modify align center of this one with the middle of that one 
click OK, Move Tool, right there, and slide it out. Woo, that has so much work. We have all our cut lines ready to rock and roll. Now, I'm going to look at it from the top. We did the same thing with the box, except on the box, what we should have done, I'm going to rotate this so the top is like this. Um, what we should have done with that one is we should have, um, we should have actually rotated and done the DXF lines from the bottom. Because on the box, we took the sides and we flattened them this way, which means the outside faces were all facing down. So we should have gone underneath the box and looked up from above. But it didn't matter. I didn't go back and fix the video because all the, the two sides were, it, it works either way. But if you have something different on one side than the other opposite side, it's not going to work. You're going to, your carving is going to be on the wrong side. So just be thoughtful about that as you go through things. Um, again, the tricky thing here is I made this into a square. So I've got to have, I need this one distance from total top to total bottom. Um, and it's got to be the same way it goes into um, Inkscape. That's why I rotated this to where the top was showing the word top in the right right side up. Um, that way I know that when I come here and I go measure to here to here, 31.225. I'm going to write that number down. I'm going to need it for Inkscape later. Put my little post-it note right up there for myself. And now I need to do the DXF file. So I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to choose the, my center part of my lid. And then I'm going to come here and do a create, project, or intersect. Intersect we'll use a bunch when we're doing different, like thicker material, and we're doing different layers in that material. But these are all one thickness thick. So I can do the project button on these, no problems. I'm just going to go around and click on everything. I don't need to click on the middle one again because by selecting it as part of the sketch, um, it's already on there. Okay, and then I'm going to click OK, I think. Yeah, then I'll click OK. Now I've got my sketch. I need to find my sketch. So it should be the flat lid here. And there it is. So it's in the sketches folder in the flat lid component. And I'm just going to make sure I'm going to turn it off. Yep, all the purple things went away, on, off, on, off. If when you turn this off, there are still purple things, it's because you have multiple layers of stuff. You need to keep undoing until this sketch disappears and then redo the sketch. Um, otherwise, yeah, don't do that. Don't have multiple layers, because what it'll do is the, the laser will actually see two red lines on top of each other, and it'll cut that twice, even though it's already cut through once. So make sure you only have one. All right, so these are back on. And now I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say save as DXF. This is the file I'm going to send to Inkscape. So I'm going to call this my first name, last name, lid. And I'm going to eat, include in here 15 by 15 by 7.5, except I'm going to use a comma instead of a point because decimal points aren't allowed in names like this. At least usually they're not. And then I'm going to hit, I'm going to make sure I know where I saved it. So for me, I'm going to save it there and I'm going to hit save. And now I'm ready to open this up in, in uh, Inkscape and decorate my lid. The lid's going to be really important because when you're above it, you're going to, that's what you're going to see. So make sure you spend some time making it a cool picture. Um, I'll show you some new techniques in Inkscape for how to, I think, well, just let me leave it at that. Although I'll show you some new <laughs> cool techniques in Inkscape for bringing in pictures in a different way. Awesome.